Hello everyone, Jinjinx here, one of the Monster Hunter math guys. So the Gunlance meta video is on its way, but Gunlance is super weird. At least it's super weird to optimize. I don't want to go into a full explanation on why that's the case, because I could literally rant on that for over 10 minutes. But I did post a relatively full explanation of why it's taking so long on our Patreon. So if you want to see that, check out our Patreon, a wink a wink. All jokes aside, we do like to thank our patrons for supporting us by providing them with little teasers like that. We actively avoid having filler or fluff heavy videos, so if we have a 10 or 20 minute long video, it's going to be a very information dense 10 or 20 minutes. And the support we get on Patreon allows us to do that without sacrificing our livelihood. But the TLDR is that because Gunlance is a little bit weird to optimize, I am taking some time to try to figure out what to include, what not to include, how to structure it, and all of that. But before we get to that, I want to frame the conversation with some Gunlance math. Before any of the builds can even make sense, you do have to understand how shelling levels and shelling types work. Now, Gunlance math is probably the weirdest and most complicated in the game. Which means there's a lot to talk about and a lot to explain on the topic. So to make it easier to digest and understand, we're going to make this into a two-parter. In this first video, we'll be talking about all of the Gunlance shelling math. And then in the next video, we'll talk about the four different play styles and how they compare to each other. So, shelling levels go from level 1 to 4. Each one increases the damage of your shells. Shelling is hit zone value independent explosive type damage. This puts it in the same class of damage as things like charge blade impact files or clusters on heavy bowgun. This means it does almost the same damage regardless of what monster you hit with it. However, just like all the other hit zone value independent explosive type damages in the game, it is not purely fixed damage. A small amount of the damage is true fire damage. True fire value is multiplied by the monster's hit zone value to get the fire damage that each shell does. This true fire damage is the reason why your shell damage may differ from 1 to 2 depending on which part or which monster you shell. And it's also the reason why your shelling will melt lava shit's armor, making Gunlance one of the best matchups against him. But let's talk damage. How much damage does each level of shelling do? Well, that's really complicated. The problem is weapon motion values and damage data is one of the most difficult things to data mine. It's not like hit zone values where you can just pull up the file for a monster and point to a point and be like, this is the hit zone value in hexadecimal for this particular monster for this particular damage type. Instead, motion values and other weapon damage data are stored in the form of random numbers and multipliers, which makes it a lot more complicated data mine. At least that's what I've been told, I don't data mine myself. This leads to motion values and the like generally just being manually tested, which is very easy to do normally with motion values because the training pool exists. But dualistic damage types like explosive damage get complicated. Now the damage values I am going to be referencing do come from Kuro Yonhon. This is the same website we use to find hit zone value data on KT as well as Behemoth before PC was able to data mine it. From the data in the past that I have used from the website and tested, it's always been accurate. And I have tested most of these values myself in the training area and they seem to be accurate. But as far as I know, these are manually tested and because rounding f***ery is kind of common in Monster Hunter world, take this with a grain of salt. Now, assuming that the values from Kuro Yonhon are correct, then there isn't an exact pattern to how the shelling scales with level. Each value just seems kind of assigned to each unique combination of shelling type and level. There is a general range in which they increase, but it's really not as simple as saying, oh, level 4 has twice as much damage as level 1. For example, for normal 3 to normal 4, the increase in base damage is 18.75%. From long 3 to 4, this is going to be 16%, and from wide 3 to 4, this is going to be 25%. And if you look at the increase from every single distinct level, there isn't really a clear pattern. And if you compare level to level, for example, wide 4 versus normal 4 and wide 2 versus normal 2, the difference is still fairly noticeable. For the fixed damage, it varies anywhere from 2 to 2.25 for wide versus normal. But the difference here is only like 1 to 3 damage depending on attack. So it's entirely possible there's just some rounding curry going on and it's supposed to be 2 times the damage for wide. And this is the base damage. This is then multiplied by a different multiplier for each shelling type depending on which attack you use. Either way, we'll discuss more of the details on these numbers for each of the different shelling types when we actually cover the shelling type. The thing to take away from this is that level 4 is much better than level 1. We're talking easily over twice the damage per shell. And while the increase from level 3 to level 4 is across the board generally the smallest increase, 
it is a noticeable damage increase, anywhere from 16% more to 25% more. To give context on why that is a big increase, going from crit boost 0 to crit boost 3 with 100% affinity is a 12% damage increase, and going from blue to white sharpness is only a 10% increase. TLDR, if you have access to level 4 shilling, use it. This is exacerbated by the fact that there are very few damage multipliers you can stack to increase shelling damage. Unlike clusters on Heavy Bowgun where you can stack so much raw you're literally stun locking a monster and it can't attack you, shelling does not scale with raw. The only things that shelling scales with in the entire game are the shelling level of your particular gun lance, artillery skill up to level 3 which gives a 30% damage bonus, and the food skill feline bombardier. Feline Bombardier for shelling is 10%, probably. If you've seen the Charge Blade Files math video we've done, then you know that for Charge Blade Impact Files, it's actually a 15% multiplicative bonus for Feline Bombardier. But CB Files math is very different because it accounts for base true raw as well, so it's not very safe to assume they run under the same patterns. So we're not 100% sure if it's a multiplicative or additive 10%, because the difference between those two is only 3%, and shelling damage is so low it's impossible to tell whether a 3% damage change is actually making a difference or if it's just rounding theory. Either way, let's just assume it's additive, so it's a 40% damage bonus to have Artillery 3 and Feline Bombardier. Also, all of these bonuses only seem to apply to the fixed damage, not the true fire damage. That value seems to stay consistent regardless of what level of artillery you have. And this true fire also seems to be completely unaffected by the damage bonuses each different shelling type has for the different shelling attacks. But again, tiny numbers could be rounding errors. Other than this multiplier, the only other way to increase your shelling damage is through capacity boost, which increases your uptime by adding one more shell per clip. This makes it basically impossible to make up the damage loss from running level 3 shelling versus level 4. So yeah, TLDR, run level 4 shelling. Now, while hits and value independent damage is very good, the reason why Gunlance is considered one of the lower DPS options in the game compared to, say, Charge Blade Impact Files or Clusters, which both are also hits and value independent damage, is because the damage scales so poorly. While in the early game, because of the fact that you don't have a lot of decos yet, not very good equipment, so you can't make very efficient builds, Gunlance shelling can be a good portion of damage. The closer you get to optimal meta sets, the less returns you get from the shelling damage because it caps so quickly. This is actually why the highest DPS options for Gunlands are actually the ones that rely less and less on shelling. Once you've capped the damage on your shells, you can stack a whole bunch of EFR and the ones that make better use of that generally deal more damage. But more on that when we talk about the Stoils. However, this does put Gunlance in a rather unique place. It is dependent on Stoil, but because the shelling damage caps so quickly, you have a much stronger argument for using defensive skills on the build. And when I say argument for defensive skills, I mean using defensive skills to actually get an overall DPS increase. Wait, Jinjinx is recommending defensive skills to increase your DPS? Nah, needs a fuck! So here's the thing, there is a limit to how much skill efficiency you can put in a build based on what good pieces of armor we have currently available. On raw EFR based weapons, this means we can normally fit almost every single EFR increasing skill except maybe a few levels of agitator or peak performance depending on which weapon you use it with. But the thing about EFR stacking skills is that they are all multipliers. As a purely conceptual example, let's say you're trying to get to a raw meta build we have in one of our many videos. Being able to fit 80% of the skills there instead of 100% of the skills will give you a much bigger DPS increase than going from 60% to 80%, because they're multiplicative, so the more you can stack, the more rewards you get out of it. But all gun launch shelling builds have to use Artillery 3 and Capacity Boost. This already puts them at around 80% the EFR skills that a normal raw weapon can fit. On top of that, because shelling makes up a percentage of your combo damage, you actually have much lower motion value per second than other weapons do anyway. In other words, a much smaller percentage of your damage is even affected by EFR compared to other weapons. So what does all this gibbery do mean? Well, basically, running a health boost 3 or earplugs or other defensive or quality of life skills on your build cost you a lot less damage than they do on other weapons. This means that on certain matchups, you actually gain a lot more DPS running a certain quality of life skill than you would running more EFR. For example, running Windproof against Lunastra doesn't cost you that much 
damage but allows you to continue attacking through her wind press attacks, which overall nets you more DPS, which is why you'll often see wind resistance on a lot of Gunlance TA runs for Lunastra. But on a lot of other weapons, you lose so much EFR to run wind resistance, it's not really worth it, and instead you'd rather just roll the wind press. And yes, this is part of what makes Gunlance builds really weird to optimize because there's so many niche fringe cases like this where a certain quality of life skill actually results in higher DPS output against a specific matchup. Alright, that is everything for this video guys. Thank you so much as always for watching the video. Next up we'll have a video discussing all the different play styles as well as how they pair up to each other in terms of DPS output. If you learned something new or you have something to add to the discussion, be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you as always to Honey for making the tools we use to make sets, as well as for a lot of the numbers we use in this video. Also, a huge thank you to Zahn, Godhigh, and Owent, three of our set optimizers over on our Discord server. Gunlands math is really weird, and I appreciate all three of them for discussing all the different intricacies with me. Also, double thank you to Godhigh for the footage we use in the background for this video. Links to all of their various things in the description. Speaking of our Discord server, the Mathalos Nest, be sure to check it out if you'd like to chat with me or any of the set optimizers, or just come chat in general about things. Be sure to check out our Twitter, we post updates, the videos, as well as various things that interest us. And be sure to check out Tuna on Twitch. He plays Monster Hunter World and a variety of other games. Also, if you'd like to help support us, be sure to check out our Patreon. And an especially big thank you to MC Persona, Foray, Exponage, Yoshi Cho, David Sternberg, XCLK07, Heika, Milky Powder, David Zhu Sinclair, John Cohen, Warren Kios, Wood Manticore, Litha Boli, Robin, Bram Orsel, Anti Spartan, Chris Porth, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Checklemen, Lupin, Mongus, Triple Agents, Alam Odom, Zimv, Billy Barthol, Jamie, and every single one of you who supports us on Patreon. Seriously, thank you guys so much, you help keep this channel alive. The nature of a lot of our videos is they take a lot of research much like this one, which makes it difficult to do YouTube the way YouTube likes to be done in terms of its algorithms. You know, release 5-10 minute videos a week, normally filled with a bunch of fluff, just trying to get as many videos as much watch time out as possible. Your support on Patreon allows us to do more in-depth videos like this while not risking our livelihood, which we really do appreciate. We do have that second part talking about the different Gunlance play styles as well as how they compare DPS wise as well as the Gunlance meta video on the way for you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know as soon as those videos come out. Again, I apologize for the delay, it's just there are so many Gunlance builds and I'm trying to figure out which ones are appropriate for the meta video. Gunlance is super weird, guys. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Happy hunting, hunters. Bye!